Hello, cuties! It is time for June's episode of Wrapped Up. And listen, guys, this is our penultimate episode of Wrapped Up Risk before I unwrap all of these and like we give it a break until December and we come up with another version of Wrapped Up. We do 10 episodes and this is episode 9 so this is our penultimate episode before we do a really fun episode next month which I'm so excited for but also very nervous for. So that's coming next month but this is the last one where we're only gonna be reading one book. That's all I'm gonna say. I Don't worry I'm not gonna be reading all of them or at least I hope not. <laughs> I don't know yet. But in terms of what we have left for Wrapped Up, we have these three shelves and this stack here that wouldn't fit there. The vibe we're going for today is I want a short book. This will probably be a pretty short vlog because I'm gonna pick a short book because I just feel like I've been reading so many long books lately and all the books that I have to read this month like on TBRs for videos and stuff are long books and I'm just surrounded by long books and I want a short book. I've had it. Enough. You know what then? I just, I love the feeling of a short book. <laughs> That's what we're going for. I'm gonna be honest, I can't remember like any of these books now that are wrapped up. Like I, I couldn't tell you any of them. Um, so let's find some short ones. That one, oh, and door outside. <laughs> That's a short one. Oh, this one? That one's short. Maybe we'll go for that one. I don't know, or this one. That one's short. These are three short books. <laughs> okay, um, I'm not even gonna look. We're going for this one. We're going for this one. I don't even know which one that was. Okay, I just gotta make my decision quick like that, you know, with this, otherwise I doubt myself. Okay, 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 okay. Let's find out what she is. I'm actually really excited for this. <gasps> I've never been happier. <laughs> I've never been happier. Yes! Okay, so this is a murder mystery. <gasps> This is one of the books I was most excited for. Okay, but can we just talk about how I've unwrapped, I've been lucky throughout Wrapped Up. If you don't remember, this is half books that I was least excited for, half books I was most excited for. I did 25 of each when we first unwrapped. And I've unwrapped a lot of books I was most excited for, just out of sheer luck, right? But that doesn't bode well for the last video we're gonna do. I'm just gonna say that. It doesn't give me good vibes for the last video that we're gonna do. But anyways, I'm excited to read this now. So this is The Inigami Curse by Shoshi Yokomizo. This is like a classic mystery Japanese murder mystery author. He's got so many books that have been published in Japanese and they're slowly being translated into English. And I've only read one, but I own a lot of them. Like there's one right here, Death on Gokuman Island. I'm pretty sure I own another one somewhere. I own a lot of them. Oh yeah, Village. <laughs> <laughs> the Village of Eight Graves. So I own a lot of them. These are the next two to read, but this is the one I've got to read next. And I'm so happy because that means I can make progress in a series. I can read a book I'm really excited to read. I can read a fun murder mystery. I don't know what's the plot of this one. In 1940s Japan, the wealthy head of an Inagami clan dies and his family eagerly await the reading of the will. But no sooner are its strange details revealed than a series of bizarre, gruesome murders begins. Oh, fun. So yeah, this is the next one and it's about 300 pages. So we'll have like three check-ins. I'll check in like every 100 pages or so. But I really enjoyed the Honjin murders, which was the first one. I thought it was a very unique murder mystery. It's got a bonkers twist at the end absolutely insane like bonkers bonkers twist but I really enjoy reading murder mysteries from different cultures from different authors from different languages that have been translated because I think they all kind of have slightly different um styles and kind of like house codes I guess I mean that's me my hot mode watching t coming out and he talks about like fashion houses house codes but they've all got different tropes you know and I'm I'm so excited that is such a good one okay we're reading the Inigami Curse next. I cannot wait to see what I think of this one. Let's get going. Okay, hey friends. Um, it's been a couple of days that I spent not really reading and uh, watching a lot of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I've become obsessed. <laughs> I've watched basically the mo two most recent seasons of Salt Lake City, which I just am obsessed with Lisa Barlow. I think she's so funny. <laughs> I just think when Jen, Jen Shaw is arrested and Lisa Barlow like starts calling up her six lawyers, <laughs> I'm shaking. I'm physically shaking. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday to me. And then I was watching the most recent season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I've been watching that over quite a while and at first I found the first half of the season really boring. I found I didn't have a housewife that I loved like I love Lisa Barlow, but then Kathy Hilton turned up as a friend of and I'm obsessed with Kathy Hilton. 
I know she's not going to be in the next season and I'm upset, but I'm now watching, I asked you guys on Instagram and you were incredibly unhelpful. I was like, what should I watch next? Should I start at lunch from the first start? Should I start, is it Potomac? I don't know how to say the place. I don't, I'm not American. Should I watch that from the start? And like, you all said a fucking different show. <laughs> So anyways, that's besides the point. But yeah, I'm now watching Beverly Hills from the start and I'm kind of obsessed. Anyways, I have read the first 100 pages of the Inagami Curse. Also, look at this bookmark that my parents got me. They went to Spain or just Portugal, I can't remember. They went on a cruise around both. And it has this like miniature little book on it. How cute is that? I've read the first 100 pages of Inugami Curse and I am enjoying it. There's so many names in this. Let me give you the plot, but the amount of names in this, it's taking me a moment to get used to who everyone is and like who's who and what the relation is between everyone. So essentially we've got the story of this family who's kind of got this patriarch at the top of it who's made success and it's got then his children and his grandchildren and he's dying and his will is gonna spawn a lot of murders, is basically what the synopsis says. And the detective character that is in all of these books, Kindaichi, Kindaichi, I think is how you say the detective's name. He's in all of the Sashi Yokomizo books. Yeah, he's like asked to come because someone like has a premonition that the will is gonna cause problems, but then that guy is murdered in the detective's hotel room. The drama. This is my second Sashi Okamiso, and obviously the last one I read quite a while ago, but they have kind of like a slow setup. Like they really let you know who, who all the players are, what the kind of local location and like the people standing within the community is. Like they have quite a slow setup. So the first murder has only just happened, literally the last chapter, it just happened. And it was pretty good. It was quite a dramatic murder. <laughs> I like drama, drama drives me at times. Can I tell you, it's the first 100 pages. No, actually, I don't think you should know. I think it's a gag, it's a gag, it's a gag moment. Like, the murder is presented in a way that's a gag. The Whoever it is has a flair for the dramatics because they didn't just murder someone, they like set it up in a way that is, whoo, wow. <laughs> So the detective character is really fun. I've been enjoying being with him again. I think the family relationships and dynamics and kind of this cutthroat business, because it's all like they all want the guy's money and the business or whatever. And the will is like a gag, but they all want to like, the will is set up in a very interesting way where like <laughs> there's multiple people on the will that say the main core family don't want to get it. But in order for like the only the main family to get it and not any of the people they don't want to get it, murders have to be committed in a strategic way. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of people playing a game and like the way he set up the will, it's like if this person dies, it goes money goes to this person. If this person dies, money goes to this person. It's a very complex web. So I'm enjoying it so far. It took me a while to read it. I'd say I was only reading like a page a minute to s at the start of this, which is pretty slow for me. Like sometimes I can average two a minute if it's like a book that I'm really excited for and enjoying. But this one does just take a little bit longer. But yeah, I don't know what to expect. I'm enjoying it and I know that it could get, I think it's gonna get crazy because the Honjin murders it, to this day is one of the craziest like murder, murder mystery resolutions I've ever heard. Like how the murder happened. Um, it's one of the fucking craziest ones I've ever heard. So I'm excited for where this is gonna go. I'm gonna pop out for a walk now. I feel like I wanna get out in nature. It's a lovely day. So I'm gonna have like a quick 25 minute walk, come back, do some stuff for the Patreon, maybe edit a bit of this video. And then I'm gonna read some more tonight. Okay, hello friends. I'm chilling here with Rora. Can you see her? Oh yeah, <laughs> little eyes. Hey beautiful. You're so pretty. She's annoyed I've come to sit here. She's like, this is my space. <laughs> I have reached 200 pages into the Inugami Curse. By the way, I have some fun books to show you in a sec that I was gonna, I opened the package and then I realized it was books and I was like, no, I have to wait to look. <laughs> 
do I check in with you guys? I'm 200 pages in. I'm not enjoying it as much as I enjoyed the Haunted Murders and as I enjoyed the first section. Okay, I have some thoughts. <laughs> I'm not unenjoying it. Like I'd say at the moment it's like a 3.5, which isn't bad, but I thought the 100 murders was so cool that I was kind of expecting this to just even go above and beyond that. Oh, she's moved away from me. <sighs> when she's unhappy, she goes, <sighs> she like breathes heavily when she's annoyed at you. And I remember thinking, I'm about to beat this bitch up. My problem with this is that there is no center to our story and what I mean by that is usually in a murder mystery when you have a detective like we do in this one I'd say once they're introduced to the story the story kind of revolves around them I feel like I don't know if this is perhaps a western convention of the books we read we write here but I feel like any book any genre will have a center to your story a main character or a main couple of characters a main group of characters that your story kind of revolves around right and in this, I expect to either be the detective or the family itself, right? We kind of use the family as the center of the story and the detective kind of flits in and out. I feel like neither of those are true and it's kind of swapping between them. Sometimes the detective for a little bit is like the core of the story and sometimes it's the family. And perhaps that is more of like a Japanese convention, I don't know, but I kind of remember feeling like that with the Honjin murders as well. I didn't know who our center was and I find it a bit unmooring. I find it a bit like, oh, there'll be like like 40 pages where the detective just isn't there, you know? And I find that switching of center a bit like jolt, like what's the word? Like jostling, like uh, jolting, I don't know. <laughs> I find it, yeah. I'm not sure if I love that aspect of it. And I've just been a little bit bored. I haven't been as like into the story as I was with the Hundred Murders or as intrigued to find out what's gonna happen. But I am still enjoying it. I still like the writing. I still like the plot. Like, they, you know, I, I'm enjoying it, but I don't feel like a deep urge to read it. I could happily do other stuff, but I'm gonna finish it today, I've decided. We're gonna just sit here and read it today because it's literally only 100 pages. Okay, let me show you my package. I think I know what's in it. In fact, I do know what's in it because it's from Book Break and I requested some books. So first, okay, yeah. First we've got Before We Say Goodbye by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is the fourth in the uh, Before the Coffee Gets Cold series. I haven't read the second and third one yet, but I own them. So I thought I'd request this one and then I could maybe like get through the series quite quickly. I loved the first one. It made me sob. Like <laughs> it was... <laughs> <laughs> incredibly emotional and this one's quite short it's only like 170 pages and I guys I keep feeling like I want to read some more short books I feel like I keep reading longer books like the whole point of this I mean this is 300 but I'd love to read some like 200 page novellas at the moment I feel like I haven't been reading a lot of that then we have got the Kamogawa food detectives what was this one about as well what's the one dish you would do anything to taste just one more time I think I just saw a cat on the cover I'm not gonna lie and I was like yeah you know I'll, I'll take it father daughter duo who own a restaurant known as food detectives capable of recre recreating a dish from their customers past that may, may well unlock their forgotten memories and inspire ongoing happiness oh fun okay so yeah i mean it's a cat <laughs> and it's food so i was intrigued by this and you know i'm trying to read more translated works oh i'm excited for this and this one's short and it's got big font that will be one i reckon i'll get to soon and then the last book that i requested was Bright Young Women. This is by the author of Luckiest Girl Alive, which I feel like was just made into a film. Was it with Mila Kunis? I'm not sure. I haven't read that, <laughs> but this one sounded good. It's set in the 70s. It's inspired by real life women targeted by one of America's most famous serial killers. So it's that kind of situation. We've got a serial killer going around killing women. We're following women kind of caught up in the orbit of it. So yeah, thank you so much Book Break for these. I'm super intrigued by all of them. Also, I love the cover of this one. How cool is that cover? I love it. So yeah, hopefully I'll get to all of these soon. But I mean, this one, it'll be a while because <laughs> I haven't read the second and third one. But I love the pink on the cover. Isn't that so pretty? So yes, anyways, I am going to now go finish the Inigami Curse um, and hopefully I'll love this last section and it'll all come together and I'll just be like so into it. That's the vibe we're hoping for, guys. Um, I gotta be honest with you, three stars. I'm giving it a three. What?
I really hated the ending. I found it so boring. Like I rarely have read a whole book and like 40 pages from the end, I'm generally thinking to myself, I could just DNF this. A, I never DNF. <laughs> B, this is like a one book vlog. And like C, if you've made it the whole way through, like 40 pages, what is that? But apparently I was like, oh, Fuck this. <laughs> this is so boring. I finished it, but like, did that add, add anything to my life? No, no. I just didn't like the resolution to this mystery. I thought it was fairly obvious. It was pretty obvious. I thought something along these lines was happening right from the start. It wasn't a big reveal. I just like, I was so bored, you guys. I was skimming. By the end, I didn't DNF, but I skimmed the page. I was like, excuse me is this outside? The car noises. I'm trying to speak through it. It's too hot, by the way, guys, to keep my window shut nowadays. We're just gonna have car noises occasionally now. But that was pretty extreme. <laughs> yeah, my eyes were like... <laughs> I remember seeing Kayla do a video once where, like, you can kind of just, like, look at the middle of the of the paragraph and like your brain will kind of take in everything that's happening to some degree. That was kind of what it was. I never do that. I always pretty much read, like, properly until the end of a book. But... It just wasn't doing it for me. I was really bored. But here's the thing. I'm not going to hold it against this author. I'm not going to be like, oh, I didn't love this one. So now I'm not going to love this author's stuff. Because I think of this like I think of Agatha Christie. I think this is like Japan's Agatha Christie. Well, no. This is published. I think this is originally published in the 70s. But, you know, this is an author who has written so many books with a detective, right? And with Agatha, I've given her five stars. I've given her one star, right? You know, not every Paro book is going to be for me. Not every Shishi Okamizo book is going to be for me. And that's okay. I feel like with these kind of detective mysteries that like the author writes again and again and again. Some are just gonna work for you, some are not. This one didn't, personally. I will say there's some aspects of this that I just like, you know, I'm not entirely sure like how politically correct aspects are. Like there's a lot of cousin marrying. There's not the best attitudes towards gay people. <laughs> and there's a character called Monkey who is described as like a character with lower than average intelligence with some sort of disability and they nickname him Monkey. And I, that just made me a bit uncomfortable throughout some of those aspects. So there's that. And also some of the translation. I wasn't sure about the translation elements of this because I kid you not, every time there was like a tense scene where characters are finding out something difficult, everyone's shoulders are shaking in excitement. Everyone's shaking left, right and centre. And I'm like, if you're a translator, I'm not sure if that's like, there's multiple words in Japanese that could, that have been used in the original text and the translator is translating them all to shaking. Or like, even if that is like, even if it's a one word, you could like use other, we have synonyms, trembling. Like it was just a lot of shaking. <laughs> And just things like that. I wasn't sure about how the translation had been done. But yeah. So that's the end of this vlog. The final vlog of Wrapped Up. Well, the penultimate vlog of Wrapped Up. But the final vlog before we get into the final vlog. <laughs> I'm really excited for what is going to come with this final episode of Wrapped Up Risk. For those of you that don't know, I bring Wrapped Up back every December for Christmas. But then I continue it on into the next year until we do about 10 episodes and then I give it a break so that we're not like fed up with it. And then I bring it back every December in a slightly new iteration. Basically a slightly new way of deciding which books are wrapped up. So yeah, that's what's gonna happen. We'll have our final episode next month. Let me know if you have any guesses down below for what the vlog is gonna be. Cause it's a bit more high concept than what the usual wrapped up vlogs are. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love you so much. I hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye.